Welcome into the Film Guy Network. It's football season, which means I've got a film study for you. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome in to the Film Guy Network on a fabulous Monday afternoon, Monday evening, Tuesday morning, however, wherever you found it. We appreciate you for watching it. I'm Brooks Austin, the director of recruiting for Sports Illustrated, uh, also the host here on the Film Guy Network. We are live Monday through Thursday, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Um, but this is perhaps why most people come to our network. We're going to break down some film uh, from the Auburn-Georgia game on Saturday. And, you know, last week when we watched the Alabama tape, Jonathan, we broke it down first half, second half, because we felt like there was a theme there, right? We felt like there was kind of two different halves of football. It's not how we're going to do it today and not how we're going to do it this week with this Auburn performance. We're going to look at the offense, and then we're going to flip over tomorrow, watch the defense. Now, one thing I will tell you about this Georgia offensive performance against Auburn the first quarter and the first drive and a half, I'm going to kind of give – now, they score on the first one, which is impressive. Um, I'm going to give the coordinator and the offense as a whole, especially the quarterback, a little bit of a reprieve because Auburn came out playing something that they were not completely expecting, okay? Auburn on tape – defensively had been a predominantly man football team they come out in this game they're rushing three dropping eight playing a ton of soft zone coverage so as a coordinator when I'm seeing a team do something as a quarterback when I'm seeing a team do something that I'm not necessarily prepared for that I'm not necessarily you know used to it's outside of their comfort zone that I have to do what I call confirm coverage all right we've got to go through the first couple of possessions making sure that we get through all of our personnel and all of our formations to see what they're doing to us, all right? That way we can see what they're doing so we can see how to attack. So you're going to see really from Georgia, the first kind of deep shot in this game, not really taken till about midway through the, I'd say, second possession. And again, that's by nature. You got to confirm coverage. All right, without further ado, we got a saying around here during the week, let's shut up and let's grind the tape. Uh, super excited to be here with you guys tonight or today again, man, if you're new to the network, uh, we do it a little bit differently around here. We like to grind the tape. So let's shut up. Let's do it. All right. We've been seeing a lot of what from uh, defenses, Jonathan, a lot of one high safety looks, right? A lot of one high safety looks. We'll check this out. One, two. Now we got two. All right. Now we got two high safeties from Auburn, something that Georgia hadn't really seen from a defense in quite some time. And if you look at it, man, the box is really light. One. Two, three, four, five, six. They got six defensive players in that box, all right, with a seventh and an eighth overhanging our two wide receivers, our, our tight end and our wide receiver right there lined up. And, oh, by the way, we are in 12 personnel as an offense. So Auburn playing a really, really light box here to start the football game against you guys, all right, a really, really light box, something that you're not necessarily accustomed to as an offense so far this season. Most teams have been playing one high against you and, and, and walking safeties down into the box. Now, granted, his eyes are pretty, uh, you know, locked in on the box, locked in on the run game, but nonetheless, that's the free hitter. That's the guy, that's the guy y'all are gonna let us be the plus one defender, and he's at nine yards. Woo, that's, that's a breeze right here. As an offensive line, we should be having a combo up to this mic. All right, we're going to insert, it sounds like, or looks like rather, for that backside inside linebacker. But it looks like we've got it licked, right? We should have everybody picked up except for Dylan Fairchild is falling on his face to start this football game. Dylan Fairchild falling on his face to start the football game. But if I'm in the box, and y'all are going to have to bear with me here. I've got some, uh, I've got some drainage going on up in the crib. Uh... But nonetheless, if I'm an offensive coordinator up in the box, uh, the first thing I'm noticing is too high, light box. Too high, light box. That's what I'm telling myself immediately. And my analysts are in my ear as well. That's their job. They ought to be up there telling me what they're seeing, giving me some relay of information 
as we go. All right, so we've seen them open the football game. We're starting to send some transfer motion. And as we send that motion, we got some guys bumping out with alignment, right? This safety was here. He's going to roll over here. This nickel corner was here. He's going to bump out here. All right, but no one really traveled with us. All right, and oh, by the way, we've got some heavy eyes over here, all right, with no stacked alignment. Everybody's kind of staring at what's happening in front of them, all right, but off the line of scrimmage. So as a coordinator, I've got what I'm calling soft zone coverage, all right? So we're going to throw a little screen into the boundary right here. This play is an absolute massive one. This play will go for a lot of yards if this number 35 right here doesn't make an incredible play. This is what I'm talking about defensively, guys. Sometimes as a defense, if my one guy makes a very special play, that's all it takes, right? One guy beat everybody else on the offense. But as an offense... We got to be perfect. We got to go 11 for 11 to make sure the play is hit. But this number 35, man, by design, this is a winner. By design, this is an absolute winner. Hat for a hat, hat for a hat, hat for a hat. He's getting inside there. If 35 doesn't make an incredible play here and retrace, this is probably an explosive to start the football game. I know y'all are probably getting tired of like woulda, coulda, shouldas. You're already shaking your head over there. You're not in your head because, you know, there's my, my dog fan in the house here. I, I know y'all are tired of this, all right? But I was doing this when you were winning national championships, okay? Because the perfection is the standard, all that bullshit y'all want to talk about. Perfection is the standard, so let's coach it to perfection. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. 35 made a great play. Still a five-yard gain right there on third and five. Now, check this out. 30 seconds on the play clock. Auburn thinks they can switch players. I think got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And there's a 12th running off the field right now as Georgia snaps the ball on third and five. Catches them with 12 men on the field. Just running no huddle, mesh spot out of duos. Okay? Got the arrow. You got the spot. We got this working, I think. All right. Yep. Arian actually ran the spot. It's actually a really, really incredible play here by this uh, defensive back. He leaves his feet at this moment right now to play this football. And not only does he play the ball, make the, t the catch really, really tough, he actually makes the tackle too. And if he doesn't, woo man, if he don't. And look at him fighting through all the trash too. He's running from behind. He's running from trail the entire time. I will say this. <clears throat> I'd like to see these rubs get created a little bit better. You know what I mean? I want to see defensive guys bumping into each other. I, I want to see, you know, I want to see this mesh point right here. I want to see you guys be able to run off and slap hands. I want to see y'all slap five on your way out. You know what I'm saying? And we got another one later where Dylan Bell's running a slant or Colby Young's running a slant and the running back's running an arrow. And I, I just, I want the two defensive players to bump into each other. I want the, the, the rub to be created a little bit better. These are the really, really refinements of offense, right? The, the differences between scoring 38 points a game and scoring 47 points per game, right? That's the difference. These little bitty refinements. Can this mesh, can that mesh get a little bit clearer? Is there any way we can influence that defensive player a little bit more? First and 10. All right, check this out. This is what I do love about your quarterback, okay? First and 10, what do you see? I see a too high safety look again, all right? I see these guys way off, all right? Way off. And I see one, two, three, four, five, six guys for my one, two, three, four, five, six blockers and a ball carrier. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to walk down to the line of scrimmage and say, hey, whoa, easy, easy, easy. Georgia, 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 whatever our run count to the right is, whatever our run check to the right is, that's what I'm doing. I don't care what the play is called now. We're going Mike ID, Mike 9, Mike 9, we're going Georgia, 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 whatever our East Coast run is, all right? That's how I would do it, by the way, as an office coordinator. We'd split the states in half. If I call anything on the right, that's our basic run to the right. If I call anything to the left or the middle of the states, that's where we're running the ball on the left. If I go city, Okay, if I go city, we might be passing right. 
Or if I go city, we might run a counter right instead of standard inside zone right. You see what I'm saying? That's how we doing this. All right, boom, massive gasher. Massive gasher right here on uh, first and 10. Um, I think this play is one-on-one -on -one with the safety and is probably a touchdown. Again, woulda, shoulda, coulda's. But this is offense. This is what offense is. Offense is a shitload of we should have scored on that play. We love it, except for you're getting beat on the second level, Drew Bobo. You're getting beat on the second level, Oscar Dell. All right, and these two players close this gap really, really quickly. Really, really quickly. Okay? Let's watch number four right here. I think this is a byproduct of number 12 bringing the fight to you. This is the first possession of the football game. First possession of the football game. I think this guy's playing a little bit more violently than you. You tell me. Jonathan, you tell me. Who's playing more violently here? I would say 12's bringing that fight today, right? Four, four's catching right about now. Let's watch 74 in here in the middle. Let's see, let's see him and nine. Let's see who's bringing the fight right here. Who, whose hands are, are, are violent? Who, who's out here bringing the, the, the fire? I, I would say probably the Mike linebacker, okay? So these are things, these are things that are creating six-yard runs against really, really good box counts that should be Trevor Etienne one-on-one -on -one with number 19. And I'm going to tell you right now, ain't, ain't nobody one-on-one -on -one this year put number one on the ground yet, not one. The most common note today is number one is special. That's the most common note on the show notes. Number one is special. I, you know, <clears throat> for a football player who is six foot three, 330 pounds, 325 pounds, 32 and a half inch arms, by definition is not the, the prototypical mold that left tackle. We've talked about it. You have to play with perfect technique, Ernest. You have to. You have to play with perfect technique. And part of your technique is what I call body positioning. All right, you, as an offensive lineman, the number one thing I got to do is put my body in between me and, or the, the guy I'm blocking and the ball carrier, right? That's the number one thing. That's all I got to do. So if I know the ball carrier, in other words, the quarterback, if I know the quarterback's right here, whoever rushes me, by God, I better put myself in between him and the ball carrier. What I don't need to be doing is being out here on the, on the outside shoulder of the guy rushing the ball carrier, all right? Now, I know we're in an inside four eye. I know that we have one, two, three, four, five box players accounted for. But I also know that we're going Mike 12 and Mike 9, which means us five have these five. So your eyes and your settings should never be going out here. You know why? Because that's the backs. If that guy comes, he's the back. We've got a three down front. One, two, three, four, and five. Those are our five. So your eyes, you should already be crashing down, honestly. We, we shouldn't even be kicking out. We, we should be, uh, we should be uh, pass setting with good inside leverage. What we shouldn't be doing is giving a two-way go, essentially, to this guy. We, we, we should be setting with good inside body lean. In fact, our right foot and our right uh, quad, our right thigh board, should be on the inside of this uh, edge rusher right now. We should not be oversetting. All right, to start this football play. These are things that last year as a redshirt freshman, he played perfect through. He had no bad tech ever. I, I would watch the tape last year and go, oh, this is why this guy's playing. This is why this guy's overcoming it. This is why this guy is defying every single time I'm like, oh, he's a guard. <clears throat> he's a guard. Physically, he's a guard. No, he's not. No, he's not. Look at the tape. Well, physically, we are not, we are not playing with perfect technique right now, and it's getting you beat. It is 100% getting you beat. Now, I would also go ahead and say this is a little bit of a coverage sack, except for maybe this corner right here that's getting hit. But I don't know. That's kind of leaky, isn't it there, Jonathan? This over here is kind of covered, right? We got a, a deep third player. Looks like that's what they're playing. Looks like they're playing cover three right now while rushing four. Okay? Something to pay attention to. All right? Playing two high safeties but rolling to cover three post snap. You see that? All right, they played the two high safeties. He was here, he was here. 21 sinks into the hook. One splits the difference and goes into a cover three. So now we're seeing, hey, they're playing that two high safety look, but post snap, they're rolling into what looks to be a cover three 
every once in a while, okay? So we're paying attention to that as an offensive coordinator. Again, what I told you to start the show, we have to what? We have to confirm coverage. We got to make sure we know what they're running as an offense, especially when they come out and play a little something different. I'm sitting here in the stadium going, oh, that's a run. Run, 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 play action. This is a great play call. I thought this was tremendous. All right. Not only are we, this is the one who gets cooked, number nine. Watch this player. You think he think it was run? All right. So that's the guy we're attacking. They're in cover three again. It looks like this safety's rolling here. This safety's rolling to the middle of the field. He's got deep thirds. He's definitely got deep thirds, which means these linebackers have free eyes. They're, they're uh, what do you call it? They're uh, gettable, right? They're uh, influenceable or influenceable, influenceable. You can influence them, right? Boom, bring them down on the run, and then they're cooked because they can't get to their hook zone. Boom. Great ball, great timing. Uh, I do want to point something out here. Now, I know it's play action. Uh, but this isn't this guy. This isn't what this guy does. This guy's not a leaner. This guy's not a leaner with a front knee lock. All right, so we're going to pay attention to this mechanically moving forward. Um, just weird to see. I, this, guy, this guy's always a rotational thrower, Jonathan. He's always a rotational thrower. He's never got his front knee locked. He's always producing good ground force. And consistently on this film, um, I see a guy that looks like he's accommodating for something. All right, he's accommodating for something. I think 15 is better than this. I need a better ball. I need a better ball. And I also, I understand why you're doing it. We have the one-on-one -on -one down here. And this safety's eyes are heavy into the box. I know first and 10, we're, we're trying to take a, uh, a touchdown shot here in the, in the green zone. All right, I understand why we're doing what we're doing. It's a run count, though. We have to be honest with that. It is 100% a run count. They've got five in the box for our five blockers. We should be giving this ball off by design. All right, but if we're going to throw this football, I need a better ball. There's no doubt about it. I need a better ball. This ball can't miss inside. All right, if we're going to stop this guy, if we're going to throw a back shoulder fade, can we have this ball up and out like it's supposed to be? All right, also number eight, I think you could probably fight for that football slightly better. Slightly better, but you can't play through the defensive back, I don't think. Right? I think it's the ball. This ball ends up at the left shoulder of this corner. This ball needs to be, this ball ends up here. This ball needs to be here, okay? That's on the quarterback. Especially when, I mean, last year, those were the throws consistently that he made, right? Especially, oh, my God, that area, 25 and in last year. Oh, shit, was he dialed. He was absolutely dialed. I can already tell the language is going to get a little rough, so I need to dial that back in. Where are we at on time right quick? The give, bro. The give. Now, uh, six in the box. Six in the box. I understand. Um, I understand this guy's getting a little leaky. I know what we're reading. But my God. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh! Oh, he's going to run right into the umpire. You're the only one left to make the damn tackle. Oh! This is when you got to get in the headset or, you know, you show, this is awesome that you have the iPads, right? You're over there on the iPads and you get to watch and get to look and you get to say, hey, look, man, they're playing. I know we've been seeing heavy counts all year, but they're playing light counts. We can run the ball. We can run the ball. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ah, that's a tud. And you know what I love about number one? I, so many times I've seen great backs. They go through that hole and they give a little you know, like, oh, man, that was me. I should have had that ball. Not a word. Not a word. In fact, he's turning around, coming back, looking for a block. Can't tell you how many times I see backs do that little, that little hippity hop through the hole of, like, damn, a little selfishness on tape, if you will. 
All right, this is the this is what I'm talking about last or, or earlier. All right, so you can't see it, but we got uh, an X wide receiver over here. He's running the slant, and we're running this little arrow right here on third and three. So all we're really doing is the old Florida rub. You know what I mean? That's all we're really doing. Instead of running a swing, though, we're running an arrow. Instead of doing this one, right, we're doing this, all right? So all we're really trying to do is get this guy picked, rubbed, something. We're trying to make it hard for him uh, to, to cover this ball in the flat. Now, my question is, is there any way as a coordinator where we can make this just a tad bit hairier? You know what I mean? Can, can we make that look a little bit uglier for this guy? Do we need to shrink our split to make him go over the top? Do we need to tighten the angle down, tell Colby, hey, really, really run this sharp. This is not going to you. Really, really run this sharp. Make that linebacker bubble over. Because if we run our depth here, right, he's either got a collision with us or he's got to go over the top of us. Nonetheless, we are not impeding the process of this linebacker near good enough, all right, on this third and three. The great news is for us, all right, we've got a, a running back that can win this situation. He's going to approach the linebacker. He's going to approach the linebacker at minus one, right? We're minus one of the sticks, and he's going to win a plus two. That's great. It's awesome that he can do that. Is there any way, any way at all, we can make this slightly more difficult on this linebacker? I think there is. I think there probably is. There's a way that we can tweak this, adjust this, fix this probably to create a slightly different and better rub. Again, here's another look at it. That right there. All right, he's, he's three yards up underneath that guy. That's, that's levels of improvement right here. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for levels of improvement sometimes even on successful plays. Because I promise you, if that, guy's, if that guy's three or four yards off Trevor Etienne in there because he's been rubbed, you're probably scoring a touchdown. Yeah. Walking in after putting somebody on their face. All right. Um, I'm not going to lie to you because I never do on this channel. This guy didn't play to his standard on Saturday. I don't know if he watches, but I'm sure he would agree. All right. This guy did not play to his standard on Saturday. We saw the first play of the game falling on his face. I'm going to call this picking a side. I can't have you picking a side. I can't have you putting your body on the inside where you think you might have a running back going. Nope. I've got to have you going straight down his soul, straight down his midline. All right. And you're going to deliver and allow the back to make him right or make you right. Right. If, if we are down the midline of this football player, we can approach and press the block and make a cut up off of it. What we can't do now, all right, is run to that hole because our offensive guard has picked a side. You see that right there? We, we, we can't. We got to stay down the midline, all right? Unless this is, no. I want to say, unless this is the same side duo, Sometimes they can get this way, right? Put the back here, and we're working duo this way, which means the read's this way. Again, not in the room. Don't know, but that sure shit looks like it to me, don't it? And he, he brings London in and points at the safety, meaning, you're, meaning London's motioning in here and inserting for zero. We've got this arc release here. We're pinning down to that mic. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we might have a bust here. Yeah, even the steps, even the steps lead me to believe, and his placement, his placement, all these guys, his placement, he's working up here, right? I think this is supposed to go this way. Maybe he just sees grass front side or uh, to the left and takes it. I don't know. I'd have to be in the room. I have to be in the room or send it off, and I'm not sending it off today. Hey, I love this in the red zone. I love this in the red zone. They're trying. They keep getting these zones, right? They're trying to work this corner to London Humphreys, all right? But we're also going to build in a swing screen into this. So we have a standard pass, and our check down's got a lead blocker. How about that? I love this. I, I really do. I think this is a, a good way to both try to take a shot, all right, while also putting uh, stress on our def on the defense, all right, with the little swing screen over here. Because now this guy's going to have to come down here, avoid a block, and make a tackle. 
Now, they have a defensive uh, player over there with Oscar, but you can see, look at all the grass. Now we've got Etienne one-on-one -on -one with this defensive back who's 15 yards from him. This is not going to end well for any defensive player in college football right about now. All right? Yank, yank. You're going to get put on your face every single time. Every single time. I, I, I'm going to count from now on. We're going to count because I'm pretty sure we can do it on one hand this year. How many times a first defender put number one on the ground? It just doesn't happen. All right? So as a coordinator, that's what we got to remember. As a coordinator, if I can give him this, I got 10 yards. If I can give him this, I got 10 yards. And that's all we got to do. Dude's crazy good. He's going to play on Sundays for so long. As long as his body holds up, he'll play on Sundays. Love this. Y'all see the, the, the line judge just ran out, right? He just ran out of the box means we're playing fast. We're playing fast as an offense. Look what happened to Auburn. They busted, right? They busted a defensive alignment right here. We've got two whole bodies that should be transferring over right about now, okay? I think it could have been snapped even earlier, to be honest with you. I think it could have been snapped even earlier. All right, we're going to 11.04. First possession of the football game. How about that? So what we didn't see on that, Jonathan, no shots, right? Saw no shots down the field. A lot of, uh, lot of underneath screens, a lot of running the football, okay? A lot of confirming coverage. That's what we're trying to do as an offense. Well, here we go. First possession of, or first play of the next possession, all right? going to shorten the field or shorten the edge and try to run a little toss crack, all right? Trying to get into this short side right here. Remember, we're going to condense the edge. That's what we talked about last week. I think Auburn's doing actually a really good job of keeping the alignment, right? That's the edge. We talk about quote-unquote shortening the edge, and they've still got two apex defenders out there. I think it's a really good job of just basic alignment from Auburn right here. Now, I still think it's getting hit. It should. It absolutely should. All right, you, Xavier Truss, should be attacking the upfield shoulder. The moment that happens, we have lost the play. All right, we have lost the play. Watch Micah Morris, the difference here. You're allowing somebody to go over the top of you, forcing this cut now, and Micah is keeping that outside arm strong. All right, he's keeping that outside arm strong, and Micah's going to finish his rep, okay? Micah's going to finish his rep with his upside or uh, upfield arm up, and, and, and leaking through, not leaking through, sealing through. We have sealed that block. Xavier has not. We have allowed that back over the top of us, all right? And he's the ultimately, ultimately the one who makes the play, all right? But we lose that rep right there. Again, you put Trevor Etienne one-on-one -on -one with a corner. Oh, man, shit would have looked ugly, right? All right, so confirming coverage again, right? Trying to make sure, all right, when we, when we do this, they do this, all right? So when we motion to three by one, they roll the safety down. They want to play cover three, right? All right, so now let's, let's run the hitch up over here. All right, let's give our, our, our quarterback a cover three beater real quick on second and six. Let's convert the sticks. Let's convert the sticks. All right, so... Now we got a first down, right? First down uh, after the uh, timeout, okay? Now, I just told you, we knew, hey, we're, we're, getting that, we're getting that cover three look when we go three by one. We've confirmed the coverage. All right, so now let's, let's figure out how we can attack that, right? How are we going to attack that? Still coming back. Coming right back to that hitch, all right, over here. Boom. Sitting right in the void. They got no defense for it, right? There's nothing for it. It's going to win no matter what. We got this right here. Bang. All right. And my notes right here at 11.51 on the notes, I said, note, I expect him to attack soon. At this point, as an offense, I've seen you do what you do. All right. You came in. I thought you were a man football team. At this point in the game, two possessions in. All right. I kind of know. If I get into this, they play this, right? If I get into this, they do this. If I run this, they do this. So now, after I get a portfolio of who they are for the day, now I can start to attack them. Now I can start to attack them. 
This is as light of a box as Georgia's gotten all year. Look at this. This is as cra this, this safety at eight and a half yards and this safety at 12 yards. That's as light as a box with this tight end attached. That's as light as it's ever going to get for Georgia. And you look what they did to it. All right. It's a nine yard rush right here. Should be. Why are, why are we, why are we catching a right tackle? Why are we getting to the second level on our heels? Because our feet aren't under control. He has a tendency to play with his feet like together. We should never play with our feet together, ever, over a right tackle. Boy, that's a lot of grass. You know what I mean? That's a lot of grass. So even though that one safety was creeping into the box, he clearly has uh, screen responsibilities, right? Watch this guy. He bails right out of the box that way as soon as the ball snapped, okay? Tight end takes him. Must have been in man coverage with the tight. So that's a cover one indicator. Twelve twenty-five. How much time we at? We're at 30. Ooh. Ooh, man. Oh, man. We got to hurry up. Yeah, you got to hit this, bro. You got to hit this. This is not trusting your teammates to do their job. Right now, that picture looks real blurry. Mm -hmm. It looks real blurry. We just got a mic uh, blitzing. We, we still got the, the split in or split zone action coming from the tight. It looks really, really gross. But there's the hit. There's, it's going to be right there, I promise you. All you have to do is trust your teammates to do their job. Trust 71 that he's going to knock his guy off his ass. And trust number four that he's going to split the end like he's supposed to and like he's coached to do. And guess what? It happens. But as a running back, we're back here doing this, and we're, and we're, and we're not necessarily – not only not trusting ourselves, but we're not trusting our teammates to do their job. Go, 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 go. I'd call this a coverage sack, to be honest with you. Um, now, 73. Every, every time you've ever been beat in your career, I promise you, every time you've ever been beat in your career, it's because your nose was over your toes. I promise. There's no, there's no secret about this, man. I would rather, for the first time in Xavier Truss's career, I would rather watch him get rolled. I, I would rather watch a defensive end just put him on his back as opposed to getting pulled down on his face. Because what it would tell me is he's finally playing in his stance. He's finally playing in his, finally playing in his ass. He's finally playing in his cheeks. You know what I mean? Like we're catching power clean bars. We we'll don't catch power clean bars like this, bro, bro. We don't. We catch them like this. Play like this. I know why. We, we feel like we can't. We feel like we can't deliver the strike without putting our head in, without getting our head involved. It's not true. It's not true at all. Watch. He's trying to be violent. He's trying to punch him. That's what he's trying to do, but he's bringing his whole body while doing so. Because this, this guy is huge, man. That's Keldrick Falk. He's a big son bitch. He's 6'5". 6'6", 255 pounds, 260 pounds. He's a good football player, all right? But we can't. We can't play that far nose over toes. As far as the coverage sack goes, covered, 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 going to be covered, going to be covered. All right, so we can sit here and crap on the right tackle all we want. Auburn did a good job covering this. All right, he wanted to throw this. He wanted to throw this so bad. I'm so glad he didn't. Uh, as an evaluator, because that, 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 ooh, you cannot. You cannot, buddy. Nobody playing on Sundays consistently throws that ball. All right? Unless their name's Will Levis and they got a mayonnaise commercial. Oh, I wanted to give some credit where credit is due. This is really, really good from your center. It doesn't look like anything. All right, it doesn't look like anything at all, but he's in there by himself, and uh, he's playing with really, really good inside off-ball hand pressure. This left hand, as a center, is our most valuable asset. You know why? Because the other hand has the ball. 
You damn right. Because the other hand is in between our legs 95% of the time when people strike us. So if our left hand's not really, really strong, which it is right here, this guy's trying to attack his offhand side, right? And Drew is a little bit beaten based off body alignment right now. But if our left hand is really, really strong, we can kind of we can kind of yank that guy back inside, all right, and put him back into our midline. Boom, just like that. Now reps over. This is the opposite of what we saw from Ernest. This is what I'm talking about with good body positioning. All we got to do is put our ass in between the defensive player and the ball carrier. That's it. And play with good feet. Be strong once we get there, right? Once we put our cheeks between me, whoa, whoa, whoa. Once we put our cheeks between me and the ball carrier, we've won the rep. Sorry, I don't know what the hell happened here, um, but we got a little off. Yeah, we might, we said this last Monday during the film study, we might, we might be missing a, a Kirby Smart press conference today, bud. Uh, we already did some of this. Let's go to the next one. All right. So you have to kick the, uh, punt the football there because of the sack on third and four. Again, I call it a coverage sack, but you guys are probably going to crap on Xavier. That's fine. Um, all right. Now, this is a. So we've confirmed the coverage at this point, right? I, to I told you a note about two minutes ago. At this point, I'm expecting the OC to start taking shots because we've confirmed coverage. We know, hey, if we bunch up out of 12, they're going to do what? They're going to play cover three. All right, so here it is. Boom. Y, H, we're in 12. We got one single high safety. All right, corners butts to the sideline. Probably got the deep third. He's probably got the deep third. He's probably got the deep third. Now, how do we attack this middle of the field safety? Well, we double move him. We're going to run. Ooh, ooh. We're going inside release Arian right here. We're going to run him, fake corner to the post. Now, when you start running this post, get up underneath this safety. Run underneath his face and run across of it. That's what we're teaching you to do. We're really trying to hit this ball right here, all right, over the top of this safety, underneath this corner. This ball should be boom, 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 right there, all right? Now, I don't know what in the hell 11's doing. Post game, there goes the corner. All right, boom. Now, he's going to yank this thing back across, and he should be running clear of this safety's face. All right, this ball is getting thrown over here. You see this corner is occupied by uh, Urosic running that. We should be running to grass right here. The coordinator has called a winner. The coordinator has called a winner. Now, my only question, I think from an uh, alignment standpoint, I think this guy's got to be a little bit further in here. That way we want to sell this corner. He really bites, and we can run back across his face. I think the distance here is a little bit off. You see, Th this safety's never biting on that. This safety's going to let this corner take that. All right. I so I think our spacing's a little bit funny. I still think we got a winner. We at least have a one-on-one, -on -one, right? And that's what Carson thinks we have now. Arian apparently stops running on the route uh, in post game. Kirby said that Arian thought Carson was scrambling. And I, he's got his eyes on him right now, and then he starts to do this instead of running this way like he's supposed to. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I've got no clue. I've got no clue. But we've, we've, we've got like a, a semi like rollout, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're faking like we're doing the sprint action right here, okay? And then we're going to stop and launch this back this way. So I, I have no idea what's going on here. Lack of execution is what's going on here. And if I let the film continue to roll, guess who gets pulled off and gets a talking to? Right here, yeah, number 11. Number 11. Oh, um, 74. We cannot, I'm not saying you quit on this play, all right? But we can't stop. We can't stop on our play. We can't allow the defensive linemen to play harder for longer than us, all right? I, I like what 74 did in this football game. I like the effort that 74 plays with. But let me tell you something. And he knows this. I guarantee you he's been told this by his dad and every coach that's ever coached him at the college level. He's got to play harder and longer than everybody else. He's got to be willing to go to – what's that What's that Coast Guard uh, quote with uh, Kevin Carson? you got to be willing to go to the depths that others will not. All right, that's what this guy's got to be able to do. 
And we can't, we can't be taking, I'm not saying we're taking the rep off, but that guy played harder and longer than us, and we can't allow that, all right? Not, not with our circumstances as an SEC offensive lineman, all right, who's got ACC physical traits, all right, but an SEC brain and an SEC uh, attitude. Still playing that too high safety look, all right? They've got six for your six. You're going to run the football effectively here. You are 100% going to run the football effectively here. I want to give some kudos. I want to give some kudos right here. 56, great job. Great job, 56, picking up that blitz on the move. All right? We're full scooping this zero to the Mike 9. All right? We're out, out. All right? We're a scoop here. We're a scoop here. Everybody got that. So the most important block is this combination between the right guard, the center, and the nose tackle, and the mic. If we don't get up to that mic, this play isn't hitting. Boom. The nose goes uh, play side. All right, great job, Bobo, getting your feet and running them. All right, and great job by these backside uh, guard and tackle right here. Wham! Uh, squaring up, not picking a side, staying on them angles. They look like twins, don't they? 56 and 57 have the same exact thing happen to them at the same exact time. Look, even the uh, defensive players are peaking at the same exact time. Look, bam. All right, so they strike. Neither of them pick a side. We're going to stay on our track, right? We're going to stay on our track the whole time throughout this play. Now, watch these defensive players. They're useless right now. Boom, they both peek their head at the same exact time. It's a great rep. I love football. Let's, uh, let's skip ahead. Sixteen forty-five, I think, is where we're going next. Effort play number twelve saves it. It's a great play design. Oh, so close. Actually, Ford makes this play. The corner. Why? Anthony Evans. Hey, understand something. This is this is a young player being young. This doesn't have to be a kill shot. This doesn't have to be a kill shot. All you got to do is be in front of him. You got to be a, a, a defensive basketball player at this point. We got to block him with our feet. We don't have to block him with our hands. If this were a screen where that corner's coming down right now and he's smacking me, trying to bring the, 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 uh, you know, the fight to me, well then yeah, I better bring my helmet and bring my screws. But right now, look at all this space. Look at all this space between these guys and the ball carrier, okay? So we've got to block this guy with our feet for an extended period of time. It doesn't matter if we win that initial shock. It doesn't matter because now that guy's a free player and he's ultimately going to make the play. Also love this. Watch this. Watch this safety back here. Watch this safety and Drew Bobo. Look, that safety's just completely backing off. He's like, hell no. Hell no. By the way, I was biting play side knee so hard out there. As soon as I saw a defensive back, I'm sprinting through your thigh board. I'm going to take my teeth and I'm going to try to literally bite your kneecap. That's what I'm going to try to do. Ain't no way I'm playing up. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to be out here doing that to me. I'm, I'm going to be going cutting them legs out. All right. 1704. All right. So this is where being a, a smart football player, the older we get, will really, really help us as a ball carrier. All right, this isn't just I got to get healthy. This is also I've got to start seeing the field a little bit better. They're trying to run counter back to the right. All right, but we have two overhang defenders as an offense. So let's talk through the combinations. You are sealing inside. All right, the center is blocking back. As a tackle, we're going to put one hand on that two eye, right? We're going to put one hand on this guy, and we're going to seal this defensive end and not allow him to run down this counter play. All right, we're going to pull and kick with the backside guard. We're going to pull, and we're trying to wrap for the front side inside linebacker, but there is none, all right, because he's now walked down to the line of scrimmage. So we've got two kicks, essentially, coming here from this offensive or from this backside of this offensive line. Now, these two guys are doubling all the way back to number 12. All right, so the free hat is going to be this linebacker right here in the box. But because these two overhangs are right here, I just told you, you should know as a running back, hey, alert, alert. I'm not going to get a wrap 
My guy's not going to be working up to the next level. Both of these guys are going to be kicking out these defensive ends. In other words, this play pre-snap, I'm telling you, this play pre-snap is going to hit inside. I'm telling you right now, it's not going out here. They've got too many players. We've got two kickers. All right, so this ball is going to hit right here on the midline. You should know this pre-snap. I, I shouldn't even have to wait for that, ooh, hesitation moment, right? As a running back, that right there shouldn't happen. That, that little hesitative move in the hole right there. Uh-uh. Go. Go. We should know. Again, they've got two overhangs. We should know this is kick, kick, not kick, wrap. Right? We're not going to be hitting this B gap and beyond. This sucker's hitting right down midline. This sucker's hitting right down midline. Wham! Right? No hesitation. Go. Go, go, go. And I know they teach you this. I know they do. Because they're a great football coaching staff. And I also know they teach it. You know why? Because Jurassic and Fairchild picked it up like that. There was no hesitation. Look at 84. 84 knows exactly where he's going. Wham! There ain't no doubts. Okay? Everybody had it and, and had it with no cert or with zero uncertainty except for the running back. Gotta go. Where are we at time wise? All right, I want to talk about a busted assignment because this is a massive critical. We have the same play called on both sides here on third and one, I think. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, this is the hold that gets called back. Uh, again, playing relatively fast, they're misaligned. They're 100% misaligned. They have massive voids over here. Massive. I would hope defensively that's not how you align yourselves. I had a bust in here. 1826. So it, was, it would have been the play. No. Oh, a busted alignment, not a busted assignment. 53 gets called for the hold here. I think it was a little ticky tacky. There's the replay over here to your right. They get him on that little. That little left hand pull right there on that left upper peck. All right. Now, I want to go to this. 2259. I'm not saying it's concerning. All right. I just want to point something out. It's the most rotational thrower Georgia's had at the quarterback position. Uh, Stetson was rotational as well. So Stetson and, 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 and Carson, the shoulders are normally always square. The, the, the lower body is never locked. They always look like they're shooting a jump shot, all right? So the knees are always bent. When we go to throw, our knees are always bent. We're never locked out on our front side. We're never leaning this way. In other words, our shoulders are always square. The ground force is always being created this way, all right? And we're not like this. Front knee locked out, we're not doing this. We're rotating off of our lower half. We're creating ground force. We are not leaners when we release the football. This dude's leaning like hell right here. I mean, leaning all over the place. That is not this guy. This guy squats on this ball, and he throws this ball just like this every single time when fully healthy. I don't think he's fully healthy, okay? Now, Kirby said he was throwing the choice return. Apparently, we, you got uh, an option right here from a from, uh, – Dominic Lovett and the, I guess that's a square in from Dylan Bell. They say they were throwing, he, say, he says he's throwing it to Dom. Um, I don't know. On the replay, it's questionable. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I just wanted to point the mechanics out because that's not that guy. Yeah. That guy doesn't do that. That guy doesn't lean and spin off one foot. There's more of this later. Hold on, I gotta find this one. Oh, 2907. All right, let's go to this. This is the play. This is both a, what I would call a misread and probably one of the worst throws he's had in college so far. All right, so we bunch up there a cover three team. We know this, all right? 
so far in this football game, they've played this thirds against this bunched look. All right. As an offense, we have the corner, we have the arrow. All right. So if we get into this guy's window at all, we should be throwing this out route right here to London Humphreys. Check this out. That is running the grass all day long. All right. Because the corner has turned his hips. God dang it. The corner has turned his hips. He is running up the sideline and we are running towards the sideline over here. So we have the winner over there. Now, for some reason, Carson, and I, I'm okay with it, Carson likes this second window Dover right here. He wants to throw this ball right over the spot, which we've seen him do 100,000 times in his career. In fact, his first most impressive ball he ever threw, in my opinion, the first one where I was like, oh, guy gets it. Guy's going to be all right. Was against Oregon, third quarter, he hits Karis Jackson on the same exact route, right over the ball. All right, and throws it with great timing, great anticipation, and great pace. That's not this guy. This guy's rotating off of one foot. This guy's leaning. All right, shoulders are tilted, front knees locked. All right, watch, watch, watch him rotate all the way onto his left side here and lean onto that left side. That's not this guy. Now, I know we got, we got a dirty pocket. I know we do, but I sent this to, uh, I sent this to some people that I trust with regards to mechanics on quarterbacks and say, hey, that's not 15. That's not the guy that we've been watching for three or four years. Is something going on? He's healthy enough to play. He's healthy enough to play. He's healthy enough to win. He's healthy enough to not make excuses for. He's also not healthy enough to look at this and go, oh, that's the normal Carson. It's not, all right? All right, 29-15, they were a two-high football team. Now they're starting to creep that safety into the box. You see him walking in? See him walking in? All right, so now we know, hey, we're probably going to start getting some cover one robber looking stuff, right? We're probably going to get a one-high safety look here in a second. Uh, number one is absolutely special. Absolutely special. Send him to the gulag, son. Send him to the gulag. Ugh. All right, I want to talk about this because I want to give some praise. What was Trevor Etienne's most heavily criticized portion of his game? Pass block. Pass block. This man knew it. This man knew it on spot, on sight. All right, it's a great job right here. They're bringing six. They're running that cover one again, right? It's actually, yeah, cover one. One high safety. Everybody else is in man coverage, all right? So this is going to run to grass. It's going to run to grass eventually. It's a great job by the coordinator of not – uh, not clouding the picture, right? We're going to take this uh, slot defender and we're going to run him on a field fade, meaning he's going to take his guy out of the picture. We're going to make sure our Z receiver over here runs a little hitch, stays clear out of the picture. And against this man, we're going to really attack this leverage against this corner on this Dover. The only thing is, what do we got to have? We got to have time to get this ball off. This is going to take a little bit to get across the formation, all right, and get into some grass. Watch number one. Watch number one pick up this Mike Blitz right here. Wham! Finds it, gets him on the ground. We're allowed to complete this football as an offense because he did his job. Now, this, this Ernest Green, this is the Ernest Green that had a preseason all SEC hype, all right? This is playing with good body lean. This is putting yourself in the right positioning. Watch him. His guy disappears. He goes away. So what's he do? He comes back inside, gets his body into the right position. Look, all right, my guy's doing some weird shit. He's probably going back inside. We got to close space. We got to get back in here. We got to shrink it back down. We got to wait for whatever's coming back out. That's a great job. That's what it looks like when we're doing everything to a perfect fundamental tee. Now, watch the quarterback again. It's a great ball. That's awesome. We're, we're leaning. We're, we're, we're leaning off of our right side. We're leaning onto our left side. Ball's kind of dying on us. All right, it's kind of towards the end. All right. But even, even an injured guy, even an injured guy out here balling, even an injured guy out here balling, all right, this was, I thought, the most important play of the football game um, from Georgia's offense. All right, 28-13, I know, 15-point game, probably in the balance here. All right, you're probably going to win this one. But if you don't convert this and you punt this ball back with four and a half minutes left, things are getting hairy. All right, it's a two-score game, and they've got time to do it. 
All right, so you, you need to convert this. If you convert this, it's probably ball game. All right, it's probably ball game. So here we go, third and 10. You're throwing the football. All right, you're throwing the football, and here we go. We got rush coming. All right, we got lots of rush coming. We got dudes all over us. We got people all over us, all right? And, and here's my thing. I don't know what 53 is doing. I don't know what 53 is doing. They're in an odd front. We have a 5-0 call, ladies and gentlemen. What does that mean? One. Ah! Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Those are the ones we're accounting for right now. The back is checking out. He's gone. He's gone. So guess what? If he comes, that's on the quarterback. If he comes, that's on the quarterback. If he comes, that's on the quarterback. You get it? We're taking the five. We got the five downs. So as an offensive line, we're going Mike 16, Mike 6. That's it. Nice and clear. So if they come, we're taking them. If they don't, we're working to find more help where they might be coming from. So 53, what are you doing? What are you doing? Drops. He drops out. Eyes inside. Now. Eyes inside now immediately because this is the only guy we're accounting for as a linebacker now. We've got one, two, three, and four. As soon as he drops out, eyes inside. I don't know where, and, and it's weird because 74 definitely thinks he's getting help. You would imagine, look at him. And he, yeah, he's getting beat. Don't get me wrong. He's getting beat. Where are our eyes though? As soon as he drops, eyes inside. Mm. We got a nice little rib shot right here if we want to take it. I think he gets away with a hold there, to be honest with you. All right, but back to the quarterback play. Great job right here of getting to the spot, all right, and knowing, hey, this guy's going to clear eventually. Look at this anticipatory throw. Word of the day, anticipatory throw. Throwing that ball, wham, right there. That's great stuff. Ooh. Hold on, I want one more number one is special. What do we have number one is special for? 38.56. Oh yes, fourth and one. Ah yes, ah yes. We are tackled at the minus two. Ah yes, we find a way to get three yards. What other number one is special? Ooh, 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 3005. Let's go back. Let's just, as, as the film study ends, let's do all of these. All right? Let's do all these. Wow. Look at number ones. Oh, this one's great. Watch this one. Yank. You? <laughs> no way. No way did this guy think he was bumping back inside. This guy right here, he's like, oh, no shot. I'm getting, I'm getting bounced this way. This dude always bounces out. He's going to do that thing where he sticks me and then jumps me. I got 7,000 photos of it from uh, Trevor Etienne this year. Nope. He sticks back inside. All right, and then this one. Oh, oh, you two guys. You two guys. You think? Uh, 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 I'm going to drag you five more yards, run up out of you two. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. All right, we didn't get to all of it because I have way too many notes. Um, Xavier Truss is an offensive guard. Let's go back to the desk. Uh, if you can spend two for me. Xavier Truss is an offensive guard, okay? Um, he's flashed as an offensive guard multiple weeks. Now, here's the problem. Um, the tendency to play nose over toes at tackle is only expounded at guard, but we're allowed to do it a little bit more. We're allowed to be road graders a little bit more at that position. We play over our toes at tackle, we're going to get ripped down. Um, I think he's a tackle. I, I would play him or I, I would play him at guard. I think Carson's dealing with a little something. I think the next time they see two high looks like that, they might give Trevor Etienne 25 totes. That's what I think. Um, I also think that was a coordinator that was very clearly um, getting something from Auburn that he was not expecting on the week leading up to that and still managed to, to, to what, score 31 points um, and, and move football effectively, move the ball effectively. All right, for Brooks Austin for the Film Guy Network, for that man, Jay Will, we'll see you tonight live at 8 o'clock. Appreciate you. Love you. Bye.